Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Bad North. Now, on the topic of this, though, this one... This one is has an artifact. It has all the units I did, like... If it was just one of the... Like, if, if it was just Berserkers and War Bows, like Great Bows, I wouldn't mind. But it's Berserkers, Great Bows, and Axe Throwers, and Dual Wielders. Which means that even for the artifact, it's a pain. Um, I know that we can restart as many times as we like because I have that turned on. Um, but this island just seems a death trap for the artifact. I'd rather take this one and deal with the annoyance which is the axe throwers. At least we can contend with them. And it does give us access to a place that has lots of money and a place that is got a new unit type or a new, new recruit. Um, and it also gives us access to a bunch of places here. So it opens up a lot. This place, not so much. Um, so we've got to take this one. If we take this one, we get an artifact, which is nice, but it only gives us access to these two. Well, if we do this one, it gives us access to these two, but this one has a new unit, which fundamentally is more powerful than an artifact, in my personal opinion. The artifacts are fun and give interesting mechanics, but in the end of the day, having another unit that you can say send to another island to get cash is fundamentally better, especially since we're getting towards the end of the game where we need as much money as we can to upgrade our units. Right, so let's grab this one. So we've got axe throwers, so we're gonna need, we're gonna, like, the way you, okay. Axe throwers have two ways of countering them. Either archers on the same level of them when they're at sea, or you can use, um, you can use swordsmen, with, or, or shieldmen, um, with, on the beach, or like, blocking them. But they're basically dominant, predominantly anti-pike. They're anti-pike. Um, they're put into the game to be an anti-pike counter because I believe the axemen and the dual wielders and the great bowmen are um, units that came in with the expansion with the um, the free um, Joachim, not Joachim, um, Joachim. Uh, basically, like it's the Norsk word, like the Nordic word for giants. Um, they came in with that particular expansion and it had. Basically, the great bows, which were designed to be anti-pike and anti-range units from range. You had the axemen that were designed to be anti-pike. And you had the dual wielders, which were designed to break up defensive lines. And they were meant to be able to jump and break up defensive lines of sealedmen and pikemen. Um, so, yeah. So, we're going to take... We need some anti. We need some archers to start off with. So are these guys fatigued. Okay. Um, we could also take bombers. We could take a. That could be actually something we could do. I forgot we had him, but his not his stuff isn't upgraded, so it's not. We're gonna probably get one use out of it, so it's not gonna be as reliable. Um, we have two units of archers. Um, predominantly, I am going to take. Uh, yeah, I will take um, two units of swordmen, two units of swordsmen, one pike, one an archer, um, and that should be allow us to deal with the worst of what we have. Um, yeah, hopefully. Um, we'll just see what happens. I'm not overly caring about. The problem is we haven't these like this place is the most important and they're already coming straight away okay so it's cannon fodder is it cannon fodder and archers or is it just gonna be straight up no it's straight up archers okay And they're coming already from the back. Right. The problem with this is that this... Right, come on. Tidy them up for me, please. need to keep an eye out. So we're going to move these units here to cover that. 
Oh, wait. Curse is not a good location. Ah, well, we still managed to deal with them. So it's no great loss. But they've already got more troops pouring in. Okay. The hit we took there is not particularly fantastic. Uh, okay. So their landing force is there upon the island. My guys got decimated. What's going on? Okay. Um, get to here, please. They're going to try and flank, which is not fantastic for us because we need to look, relocate. Come on, move! Okay, so they're pouring troops out of here. You're going to reinforce that flank. Yeah, this is going to be a nasty fight. So they're coming in massive force. Everyone to the beach, please. Yeah. Flush them out, lads. Floss them out. Man, that was a nasty fight. But we managed to hold it. Seven gold. But these are the kind of numbers you will get if you play it on the hardest setting. Like, this will be what the first wave is like. Like, you will have literally a couple of turns where you'll have nothing and then everything gets thrown at you. Okay. Yeah, I know we've got two units, but there's no point just doing it with Pikeman and the Bowman. Right. First go, this unit. Once we get this unit, we'll go for here, and then we'll go for here. This is looks like relatively safe money. Um. Okay, yeah, it's relatively safe money. They've got only really one way up to the top level. Which is fine with us. Um, they got Axemen. Axemen, Sealed Warriors, and Cannon Fodder. So we've got to take the Pikemen because he can be redeployed. We'll take... I wish I could... I wish I had a... Swordsman, I didn't worry. I'll take him because he's relatively unimportant. Um, and we're going to have to take a range unit because the Pikemen is taking him. Right. So we've got two pikemen, one swordman, one archer. Um, that should be able to be useful. And they're going to shove us all the way up here, which is not great. Okay. Right, let's pull out, because I want to try and see exactly where they're coming from. So they're coming straight from across here. Okay. So we need to hold this at all costs. Right, fall back behind the pikes. Because they can't get us any other way except from here. So I'm going to sub you in quickly now with this way to heal up as we deal with this unit, with these sealed warriors. There is a lot of them. 
Oh my lord, there's more than I thought. At least we got reinforcements. Okay, they've got a ton of cannon fodder coming in. You get here, deal with all this cannon fodder. Well, you swarm around here and deal with, with basically the riffraff. Oh, my goodness me, that's a lot of troops. And they're coming in. The problem is they're coming in piecemealy. Which is not great for us. That's a lot, even by my standards. Get in the house and, and heal up as best you can. Oh boy, this is bad. Right, reinforcements. You get here. They gotta land here. Now. Whew, that jump ability is useful for dealing with the axe warriors, I will admit. We got to collect, which means that his discount for items, he gets a discount for items upgrading. Um, but he's no, that's not really fantastically interesting for me, to be honest. Um, I also have to think about who I'm going to take into my final fight. Um. Let's see, who was the one that had the additional piercing damage? Sop weapons deal increased damage, so it's this one. He's basically the bloke who I'll likely take into the final combat with me, which means I need to get him upgraded. Um, right, we're going to take this island. I mean, unless this one has a lot, an easy defensible location. Yeah. No, actually, it's not too bad. I groan before I look at the map. Um, hold here, hold here. If we sacrifice this, which I'm not really bothered with, it's one gold. If I take this bloke here, we'll make that one gold up. So we can hold this location relatively straightforwardly. It's These blokes are going to be a pain. Yeah, we should be able to deal with it. Um... With the units I have available, take this location. Yeah, should be able to do it without too much issue. So we want him. We want a couple of units of pikemen to deal with these guys. And we'll want at least this unit of swordsmen to deal with this bloke. Um, and whatever archers are floating about. To be honest, yeah, this should be okay. I can resupply with him. I suppose I could take the bigger unit size, but his ability to resupply is really nice. Um, so let's do that. Alright, I'm going to redeploy you down here quickly. Our biggest worry is troops coming from this front, this front here. Or from that front, apparently, because they're coming straight for us. Okay. They're all going to be pouring into here, which is a pretty T-bad showing starting off with. Fortunately, there are no range support units. They're just all 
but they're still cannon fodder and sealed warriors, so we should be able to deal with them. We need to keep an eye out for these guys, though. Right. Redeploy to here, please. back. Uh, what they can... Oh, this is what I hate about these guys, is that they can get through... To, take them. I really hate the war bows. They consider they are a massively overpowered unit, in my personal opinion. Um, they feel ludicrously overpowered. Um, I don't know. They just—they're such a hard counter to everything that you have that it's nearly impossible for you to find an easy way of dealing with them. Um. I'm not personally a fan. I think they are a bit too overpowered. Um, the fact they're super fragile doesn't matter since they can literally cave in any opponent that they face. Right, so they're coming in here. Um, they've got art to support, which is worrying for me. So I'm going to shove these guys up here. Can I get a round? No. So they're actually just going to be barreling through here like no one's business. So you've got to sacrifice that. I don't care about that house. You guys can take it. You go and murder these archers, please. Yeah, so we got they gotta come through here. You're gonna charge them. There we go. We lost a house. I don't care, to be honest. One gold. We get one gold from that arch unit anyway, so it makes up for that house being burnt. Okay. Got 23 gold. First off, he needs to get upgraded. So he's maxed out Pike. Um, yeah, he's maxed out Pike. Um, you can see how powerful the pikemen are. This unit has lost 39 members, but we've killed 241 cannon, like just basic Vikings, 173 sealed warriors, 29 axe throwers, 33 berserkers, and 13 basically dual wielders. I mean, compared to the other units, like this guy's. Just from the two common folk alone, this unit has killed 500. Um, the archers aren't bad. The archers do get a lot of kills in. Um, sealed warriors, no, they don't. Like I predominantly use my sealed warriors as anti-range um, cover. They cover and they deal with certain enemy types. That's all they're really designed to do. Um, predominantly, I find later, later in-game you use them predominantly to deal with war bows because they're just overpowered as sin, um, axe throwers who are a hard counter to range units, and well, range units and pikemen. Um, 
the reason I level up my Sealed Warriors so much is predominantly because late game, as you can see, this is Nord B is basically your last stand, your capital. Um, they chuck everything at you, and I mean everything. And the problem is that normally by the last wave, you haven't got a lot of troops, and they're pouring these guys in. You have to remember, though, this is one of the things this game deceptively doesn't tell you about, which is that as long as you have one unit left in the final scenario, you win. Now, for me, that, like, unless you're going for the no man left behind achievement, which is that you have all recruits, like all your remaining active troops, yeah? As long as you have um, all of your command, like, the no man left behind achievement is that you have to play on hardcore recruit all commanders and not lose any of, lose any of them. Um, and that's the only achievement in the game which requires you not to lose anyone. Now, what that tells me as a, as a player of this game is that normally, by the time you get this, to this scenario, they expect you to literally sacrifice everybody you have to win. Which is understandable, you have two buildings on this map. Um, from the looks of it, I'd say it's only got about a couple ways up. Um, so I'd be really tempted to sacrifice... The, the, the risk of sacrificing buildings in this game is twofold, which is what a lot of people don't realise. Is that, um, predominantly, they are the way you make money, especially for most of the game. One of the other things they do is they are a resupply location for your troops. Now, this is important because to easily resupply your troops, you want to use a house which is close to your front line. Because it will take you time to get your troops into the house for them to basically have... Because they, have they all have to get into the house before the regeneration clock starts. Um, so you want to be as close as possible to whatever house you want. You want to have whatever house you're using to replenish to be as close as possible to your front line. So... Losing houses early on, especially in the last stand, is a big no-no. Um, so, for example, when it comes to this map, which has a lot of stuff on it, but it's got no walls. This place is going to be a nightmare, because they're throwing everything at you. Yeah, they're throwing everything at you. The only thing you can't see is sealed warriors. Um, they're throwing nearly everything at you, and you're supposed to hold it with four units. Um, which is going to be hard. Here, for example, where it's just going to be Axemen and Cannon Fodder. Yeah, Axemen... Uh, no, it's Axemen and Sealed Warriors. Now, for example, easy place to hold, from the looks of it, is going to be here. Because they can only get to this place by coming through here. It's going to be here. And the main weakness is that if you want to try and hold this building if you don't want to hold this building you just basically hold it here uh, yeah you just hold it um, here in this choke point and here and it'd be massively easy but then you lose the money um, but I wish I could see what this map was from looking at it it looks like there's gonna be a route up there unless it cuts underneath unless there's a passageway underneath the worst maps are the maps that look fine and then they have like passageways through mountains. Um, but this is going to be a really interesting final stand. Here, uh, it depends. This one is going to be a pain because it's just so open and so many enemies. There's like so much money. But this is what I'd say is a trap. Especially if you're playing it on its normal setting, which is that you lose commanders. And you can't wait, not lose commanders, but you lose the like, you lose the ability to re to restart a map. This is what I'd say would be like a honey trap, which is that there's a lot of money, but they're throwing so much stuff at you. And it, at this point in the game, there's going to be a lot of enemies, even on, even on easy mode, that you would run the risk of losing a number of your veteran units. You would probably lose one unit and win the map, which sounds like a fair exchange, unless it's a unit that's very very important for your final gameplay um and yeah so normal if you're playing this on the normal difficulty without the restart ability on i would avoid a map like this like the plague this island is like a honey trap just waiting to kill people um so what i'm gonna what i think i might do is i'm gonna take this map and then we're gonna try and clean up these ones because these look like fairly straightforward defensible ones judging from the terrain this will get us enough money probably to upgrade the units. Most of the units we have going into the final stand, I mean, he needs to be upgraded 
a fair, a fair amount. Because I'm taking him in with his minds. So he needs to have his ability and his minds upgraded. Um, not interested in him. He might be useful... The thing is, he might be useful because he can rapidly re redeploy, though his numbers are smaller. Um, neither of these guys have artifacts, so I'm not going to take them. But I, this is the thing: is I'm gonna, I need to take at least one unit of ranged troops for the final stand, which is likely going to be him. Um, I need to take at least one pikeman, and I'd like to have a more efficient pikeman unit. So I'm gonna, probably going to take the one that's more damage. And I need at least, probably, judging from what we're facing, two units of sealed men. I found, like, it's taken me, like, I've beaten this game once before on this same level of difficulty. And on the final battle on Nordby, you end up, um, on your last stand, you end up, like, throwing a lot of your normal tactics out the window. But we'll see what happens. Um, if you've liked, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Steam. And leave a comment in the comment section. And I'll get back in contact with you. This has been Bad North. And I've been Cornus Knight. And I shall see you all again next time. Goodbye.